Have you stated what the problem is to Tommy? Well, he knows. He... Tommy? He knows the problem. What are you coming to see the doctor for? Tell Dr. Staten what your hobby is. <laughs> What's your hobby? <laughs> his own little joke. Bobby is not going to school. Oh. That's right. <laughs> Tommy is six in first grade, but he won't go to school. His parents don't know why he won't go. His brothers and sister go without any trouble. His teachers don't know why. They've tried to help him to come. But all children must go to school, including Tommy. I'll be trying to convince him. We've tried, huh? every possible approach that we could, from bribery uh, through talking him into it, trying to find out what the problem is, you know, if he uh, couldn't get along with the teachers, if he wasn't capable of his work, or maybe uh, he just didn't like the kids, or he was having problems with the children at the school, and this didn't seem to be the fact. It seemed to be something inside him. All children. I'll wake up in the morning and say, oh, my, my leg hurts and my arm hurts. I can't go to school. And my mother used to take your temperature. So I use a the thermometer just the same as mom did or feel their heads or something. And with the others, they accept that they go to school. And so that was the same attitude I took with Tom. I never, we tried not to make it a big thing. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, you know, at first that would work. But I suppose and whatever was bothering him was still building up. And gradually that didn't work. Then we began to. Well, well, we Peter got a calendar with the... it. Uh, we tried uh, offering him some incentive. You know, you can put a gold star up for every day you go. And if you get so many, you get a little prize. And yeah. uh, that worked for a couple of days. He was pretty proud when he got them up there. And then we went, I guess, to the other extreme. And uh, once I just put him in a car and carried him right into the school. and. Uh, that uh, didn't work. If he makes a promise to me that he'll go to school the next day, you know, he feels obligated. And one morning, at 6.30 in the morning, he was in beside my bed. He was all dressed, without his coat on, but with his school bag strapped on his back. And he was, you know, bound and determined he was going to go to school. But then, you know, as the morning went on, the enthusiasm waned. He didn't eat breakfast, and when it came time to go to school, it, Tommy discovered he had to go to the bathroom. Does that happen quite often, if you decide you're going to go to school or you have to go to the bathroom? Peter was away all last week, you know. And uh, came Monday morning. I was calling the older boys for school, and Tom said, do I have to go to school? And I said, well, do you want to go to school? And he said, well, that big guy's home. And I said, you mean Daddy? He says, yep, that big guy. He said, I'll have to go to school. And... Uh, I said, how come you'll go to school for Daddy, Tommy? You won't go to school for me. He says, well, I'm trying, Mom. And I said, what do you mean? You're trying to go to school for me? He says, no, I'm trying not to go for Daddy. <laughs> and he didn't either. <laughs> didn't you spank Tommy about school? No, I have not spanked him. I, you know, I wonder why. I found out, uh, at least, uh, I figured when Tommy was younger, and when he would get into real trouble, do something that would qualify him for his spanking. I mean, the spanking didn't have much effect on him. I recall one of the times I drove him up to school to try to talk him into going. Uh, I did tell him that uh, if you don't uh, get into school, you're going to get spanked. And he said, take me home and spank me. He just rolled off. And That's right. That time that he came home from school, I used a strap on his bottom. I mean, I was going to extreme measures. Sure. And uh, but even that didn't. How did he take it? Oh, he screamed, "Blue murder!" I got black and blue mark on my shoulder where he kicked me. Mm -hmm. He and fought right every minute. Him. Yes. And then, I mean, that wasn't a very bad spanking even then because I couldn't land on him often enough. He was jumping around too much. Have you any idea, through Tommy or his teacher, uh, whether there was any? Difficulty in the school situation itself? The teacher, we know, is an older woman. And uh, I didn't want to have Tom placed with her in the first place mm -hmm. because she has a reputation for, you know, getting attention by screaming. And uh, she's well known for not being a very sympathetic person. 
But it was just at the end of the summer that my brother lost his family, and we had to go to Toronto for the funeral. So we were two days late entering Tom in school, and he just had to go into the class that had the least number of pupils. Although I phoned Miss Murphy at the time to ask her, could he possibly go into the younger teacher's class? But she said no. We received a telephone call from the mother about the, about the middle of September, complaining and uh, that Tommy had a little difficulty at school and she could not get him to come. In the morning, he would make up all kinds of excuses and just wouldn't come. And we noticed that he was a very shy child and slow to mix with others. Uh, and felt we, we, uh, he looked as if he were a little fearful of everything and that he had a great deal of anxiety of some kind, but we just couldn't reach him. In order to help the mother, I referred the case to our supervisor of studies. I always listen to complaints of this kind. And uh, I investigated, and I still could see no reason to change the child from this uh, teacher to, to the other teacher. Uh, the parent made certain uh, charges, but upon investigation, I found that uh, I concluded that these were not valid complaints. Seeing that she had a problem, we finally acceded to her request and moved the child from one class to the other. We made the change, and... Um we, he came one afternoon, and then we didn't see him for three weeks. So uh, that we saw that wasn't going to work. How'd you happen to come? Uh, how do we come here? Yeah. Well, after that last session I told you about with the principal and the teacher, and uh, they were very good. Yeah, we had a real good session there in uh, at the school. And I thought this would break down whatever fears or doubts he might have about the teachers, because uh, they were excellent for them. And uh, I probably convinced myself that this might solve the problem. But the next day, we were right back at it. Uh, so at that point, we decided uh, we better get somebody who's equipped to handle this, had experience with it, so we asked our doctor. And uh, he referred us here to the hospital. How did you feel about... Uh we knew that you were going to be talking to a psychiatrist. Now that he's in his first year, uh, first evidence of this showing, uh, it's got to be corrected. We had to get uh, psychiatric help to get it done. Uh, let's get it done as quick as we can. Okay. Who stays at home when you're in school? Mommy and Casey. Casey is five. But everybody else goes off to, to school. <laughs> and you'd like to? Would you like to be able to? You like it better at home, do you? Can you uh, feel at all how you might be mixed up in this? No, I've tried because I felt if I could find out what I was doing wrong, I, I could write it. But I can't. Tom has certainly been treated no different than the others, except that he is a slightly different temperament, and maybe we should have been treating him different. He's a little more... Uh, Temperamental, maybe. I'm interested in this te different temperament. <laughs> Can you describe it? I, uh, I well, get a little bit of the feel of it, but uh... he is. Uh, Tom has so many fears that he's. Uh, I've seen him. He, you know, he's hurt, and it doesn't seem to bother him. But if he ever feels people are mad at him, if somebody merely means what they're, they're fighting with him about, mm -hmm. then that bothers him. He when you say it bothers him, what do you think he thinks? Well, he. I don't know. He just seems to. Uh, He'll just stand there and he'll open his mouth and he'll scream, you know, a terrible, harsh scream. He'll as overcome if, with, as it's a fearful with scream? With emotion. No. And then he retires to his bed with his blanket and his thumb. Just climbs mm -hmm. into bed, he gets his clothes. You still have a blanket? Well, just any old blanket with a satin lining, he's quite happy with. Gets the blanket between his fingers and puts his thumb in his mouth. A very whimsical grin sort of came over your, your face. I was thinking about uh, blanket business. He's not the only one of my children that has sucked his thumb. Yeah. But he's the only one that kept on with it. Last night, he told me, he, I forget, I, I reprimanded him about something, and he did what he usually does now, he retired to his bed. And I went in and I said, Tom, what did you go to bed for? He said, oh, I wish I was dead. And I said, why? He says, no, I guess I wish I was a dog. I said, well, what do you want to be a dog for? He said, well, dogs don't, got, don't get balled out for anything. And uh, 
Then he started talking about being dead again. And then I said to him, uh, you mean you want to be with uh, Ricky and David and the other kids? Uh, these are... Uh, <clears throat> these are his cousins that died in the fire. They were away at a summer cottage, and the cottage burned. He said, I hope some of them go to hell. That was rather a shocking thing to come from him. And, uh, and I said, why, Tom? He said, oh, I just do. So he has feelings about these children that I suppose maybe he thinks that he's doomed to hell and he wants to have company or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I'm interested in finding out about uh, Tommy as a little baby and runabout, uh, what you can remember of him. He was born a month after my daughter died and we had thought that possibly, you know... Well, that, well that's one of the major incidents that I think might have some connection with this. Uh, actually, our first child, uh, a girl, when she was about uh, nine years old, she contracted cancer of the lymph glands. Over a period of about a year, um, well, she had operations and practically daily x-ray treatments, things like this. <laughs> um, but uh, I, the, uh, I certainly was told by the doctors, and I'm sure uh, my wife realized it, that... Uh, Practically nothing could be done. Sure. And uh, well, about a year later, she died. She just uh, dwindled away to nothing, and uh, she passed away. And uh, it, that was a very serious thing, because at this time, when she died, Tess was actually pregnant with Tommy. Do you think it made uh, Tommy a little more significant and perhaps a little more valuable or any time I felt myself uh, sort of going off the deep end because of Patty mm -hmm. I'd uh, you know I'd stop and think about the baby I had to think about the baby mm -hmm. and it, I think he saved my sanity really can you tell me about when you were alone at home with uh, Patty how you felt and how it went I knew I know I knew she was dying because I'd sit on the bed and hold her and I think it's she just feels like flesh and blood to me now but you know, she could be nothing in a few weeks. I don't enjoy going to the cemetery. I don't know if that means anything. I prefer to think of her as she was rather than mm -hmm. think of what's underneath the ground. But how could that relate to Tom? Unless I did or said something to him or behaved in some way. Well, I'm, we're just wondering whether there's a common factor here in... Your reaction. You did go through a tragedy again, for your brother at least, just before Tom went off to school. <clears throat> yes, and that was, I'm afraid they, they got a good deal more show of emotion from me on that because it was such a shocker. I'm just wondering whether sadness and, and these kind of tragedies are so um, painful for you that, you know, you just do, uh, don't deal with them very easily and... Uh, well, nobody deals with them easily, but the way you deal with them is to push them out. I don't think I pushed it out. I mean, as long as you can discuss. I mean, I don't like to think about my sadness, if that's what you mean. I don't like to think... I like to think about Patty as, uh, you know, Not all the best. fun we had. Sure. I don't much like to think about her dying and uh, not being there. I, if I start thinking like this, I usually think about something else. Well... Tommy and uh, Patty were linked early on. Yeah, definitely. And does, uh, do you see any link still? You mean with Tommy's behavior now? It's as far as you're feeling for him or anything like that. It's... Oh. I feel for my children all the same. I don't think I could differ differentiate between... I feel more for Tom now because he's in trouble, because he's having these worries and everything. With Tom, I never could figure out why it was going to, well, except through me, I suppose. It would come out in him. But what have I done wrong? Well, I don't think it's a matter of doing anything wrong. Circumstances uh, you know, get people into to different situations. I just wonder whether uh, Tom hasn't had a different experience than the others in relationship to you, that you've somehow or other been a little bit more permissive with him, or... Uh, That's possible, because he was a... 
as I said, he's had this uh, temperament that was an extreme temperament, would have temperament as far as bad temper goes, or he was extremely good. Do you think you gave him more, or do you think you gave him less? My love, you mean? Mm-hmm. It's awfully hard to, to judge. I just certainly wouldn't have given him less, I'm sure of that. He was an adorable baby, and he was, well, you can see him. He's an adorable child. Now, with Dr. Staten and Tommy, we meet one of the villains of the piece. Do you remember uh, about the last time I saw you, or was it the time before, we made the discovery of a guy by the name of Tom Thumb. Mm -hmm. And Tom Thumb was a kind of fella that you weren't sure that you liked too well, and yet you thought there were some things about him that you liked a lot? He said that Tom Thumb likes to stay home from school. Tom Tom likes to stay home from school. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. I'll be that then. Tommy, I understand you don't want to go to school. Right. You may not want to go to school, Tommy, but uh, you know that uh, every kid your age has to go to school. Only That's, five. You're only five? Yeah. I'm seven. Sometimes you feel as though you were only five. I think when you're acting like Tom Thumb, you're only five. <laughs> you want to have a fight with me? Or do you want me to just pick you up and take you to school? I want to take me to school. Oh, is that what you want? All right. Come on. Where we go? Off to school. Now, I'm Mr. Principal. Hello. Oh. How are you? How are bad. you? The, you're bad? Yeah. Why? Because. Because why? What did you do today? I didn't want to go to school today. You didn't want to go to school today? I did all the time, really. But you did all the time? Not him, but I did. Yeah, Tom did, but Tom Thumb said... He did. But, he didn't, but I did. But I, but I played at him. I went. But you fighted him, and you went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you handle this? I think I saw them about four times, probably all together. This isn't uh, very much to uh, solve a problem that obviously to them was a major problem. They can be a lot more difficult. Uh, they can be more difficult when the children are older. In a sense, I suppose Tommy was lucky that this showed up when it did. Well, I think it was uh, fortunate that uh, for Tommy and his family that uh, this was discovered when he was six. If the pattern had have persisted and they had have uh, always given in to Tommy and uh, Tommy always sort of given in and covered up because Tom has a tremendous quality and ability to be able to cover up. And he uh, sort of gets his own way uh, in, a, in a very nice and pleasant sort of way, but uh, it isn't good for him. He uh, needs to come up against the realities, just like every other child. If he had persisted in this, he would have been a, an extremely manipulative kind of person uh, and perhaps been quite limited in the sphere of activity that he could take. He would have to know exactly what was going to come off before he could jump into it. And, uh, it might have made a very narrow kind of person or a shallow could have kind of person. changed his whole being then. It certainly could have, yes. Is school phobia always a result of some disastrous situation that involves profound grief on the part of the mother? There are many causes. The basic one seems to be that something uh, in a rather uh, well something's happened to all of these children in fairly early infancy the phobia if it's a real phobia where there's a uh, absolute uh, fear of school with no real justification for it whatsoever this is a psychiatric problem tommy goes to school now every day He's doing very well in his studies. His parents have learned a great deal. But I, I uh, feel right now that uh, 
that's it. Seems to be all over. Even, you know, outside of the school situation, it seems, you know, he's getting more of a compromising nature. He doesn't swing into these temper tantrums and uh, sort of wild uh, furies or anything like that as much as he no. did. No, actually decreasing all the time. Yeah. I hadn't realized that, but there haven't been any for a long time. So at what point did you begin to, to see what, well, there's not one problem. There seems to be several, don't there? Well, it was the uh, incident you had with the coat. That seemed to uh, sort of face him with the real problem of uh, partially compromising. But Tom had gotten angry and thrown the coats on the floor, and I put up the idea that they shouldn't be there and put it up to the two of you to uh, see how you can get Tom to put these coats back. Well, at the point they picked the coat up was when you said, you know, I think the two of us haven't been getting together in our approach to Tom. And because Peter's been so dominant in that direction, I tend to be softer, I suppose. I think at that point, you almost uh, dramatically came, came closer together, the two of you, in, in how you were going to manage this. He couldn't stand the combined force. No, I think this was it. He, uh, he, sort of he was ready to say, if, if, if really uh, you're going to give me this kind of uh, leadership, then uh, I'll go along with you. But as long as I can uh, bust it up and prick the uh, balloon somehow, or I'm going to do that, because that uh, gives him some sort of fun. But I think it also is frightening to him. Uh, this other problem about uh, death and dying and all that, this will continue to crop up in other areas? The uh, way I see it is that uh, the, uh, the separation, when he's away from, from you, um, he begins to worry just what's going on with you and, and your wife or uh, at home. But this is more likely to happen when he's upset and anxious himself in a new situation or something like that. He speaks of death quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he gets mad at anybody, he'll say he wishes you were dead. And, mm -hmm. Or he'll make a joke and give a crazy laugh and said, uh, say something about dying in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. It's an area that we, we might need to help him with uh, a little bit more to understand. Tommy uh, is something extremely special to you. He helped you through the tragedy of uh, Pat's, Patty, yeah. Patty's death. Do you think that my emotions in the, when Tommy was just an infant would be transmitted to him? Well, what do you think? Well, I didn't at the time, because where I would uh, control myself with the older ones, I wouldn't particularly worry with the baby, I suppose. I don't remember how I behaved, the trouble. You, you don't know whether when you're alone with with Tommy, you, you let yourself... Uh, oh, I'm sure I did. Because cry Patty, and weep. And because a baby would not... I mean, I would cry an awful lot when I was alone. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the baby wouldn't stop me because I wouldn't consider him... as anybody that could see me. I wouldn't <laughs> consider one so young capable of retaining. I was nursing him, mind you. Maybe that... Mm -hmm. I suppose it would upset him. Well, uh, this is a... Uh, I can see there sounds... must be a tie-in because it's so obviously Tommy's trouble. But what can I give him now to replace what I took from him then? In that period of time, when Tommy was a baby, uh, he wasn't subjected to the strong you, the you that uh, uh, would transmit strength, mm -hmm. other than good, uh, good food and calories and all these kind of things. <laughs> if we can think of uh, emotional strength being transmitted too, we can find, feel that he would be uh, rather fragile, perhaps, and uh, quite easily frightened, yeah. because there was a lot of fear around him at, at that time. And I think you've sensed this in him uh, all the way along, and uh, without realizing it, tend to probably shelter him from uh, and giving in to him, because you must have sensed the real quality of the, the fear that he felt when he got frightened. It's not a normal 
interfere with Tom. It's something so deep inside of him that he can't control it himself. Mm -hmm. I think it points back to the two factors we've been dealing with through most of these last sessions. Uh, the circumstances of the deaths in the family. And even though it wouldn't occur to us that this could affect him, uh, it obviously has, plus the fact that uh, we weren't handling the problems correctly, you know, the one being played against the other. All the conclusions that have been reached about uh, the joining up Patty's death with uh, my leaning on Tom and maybe him not being able to lean back when he needed it as a baby. And therefore, he learned not to compromise with me because I couldn't, I couldn't give him what he needed. And that's how he uh, grew up. I don't think he mistrusted adults, but he knew that there was something that he didn't give him that he needed when he was younger. I don't suppose he understands that himself. But the thing is now, he'll, um, even if he doesn't understand his own problem, I think he'll feel that we do. And uh, rather than take it out on the teachers or anyone else, he'll turn to us. 